all right so we are back part two continuing our discussion um any other lyrics that stood out for you from sandcastle view uh as a matter of fact yes it says no matter how much i've laughed in my own lifetime don't run away i say don't give up and i don't know about you but that really resonated with myself because there's like moments in our lives where you can't help but look back and then you kind of laugh at yourself and the decision that you took mm. and that's something that can like carry over and continue to influence the person that you are today and but kind of just acknowledging that but also saying don't stop don't give up is a, a lyric that sounds out and stands out for me yeah i really just as a whole really enjoyed this song as well like the the lyrical approach it took and like the topical approach it took i really enjoyed it a lot you know and as you're saying you know just that whole like that whole approach of like i don't know like there's just so much that you have to take into your own hands but also like there's just those times where like as you mentioned you you have to look back and like I think the best, like, place to apply that is, um, you know, I, I don't know if you're similar in this sense, but I know there have been, like, plenty of times where, like, I randomly think back to, like, a moment that, like, happened and, like, either at the fact of, like, uh, what's the way to, like, truly describe it? Not in a sense, like, cringy you know but like maybe there's a moment that you look back on that was either embarrassing for you or like it was something that like you know let's say was like a difficult time but then like you look at kind of almost in a sense what like it led to almost in that way of like how pe certain people you know they take the approach of like uh they're in a sense grateful for their experiences even if they were like traumatizing in a sense because it shaped them into the person that they came to be you know Mm, yeah, I could definitely relate to that. Because everyone has their moments. But we should also consider that those moments have influenced who we are today. And hopefully, hopefully, the person or the people that we are today have matured and grown from those experiences. And when, when I was looking back at like the other... Twice releases, but um, specifically Perfect World, I found a lyric that kind of, it's very interesting because the lyric says, like a sandcastle, the perfect world crumbles without a sound. And it, it kind of fits perfectly in the sense that even though we take control of our lives and we build our sandcastle using our experiences in life it could also crumble at any given second even though we don't want it to yeah I, I really wow I really like that line that's pretty good I'm telling you some of these lyrics are very beautiful in their own way it's almost yeah. like poetry yeah they they really uh I um I need to look more into you know like their previous uh, releases and see stuff, but like they really kind of stepped it up with this like album because it's like they're just they took an approach that like I can definitely say many wouldn't expect because going back to our K-pop video that we did, you know, um, many people have their own like how you mentioned biases or uh you know sort of views even if. Some of them may be a bit stereotypical in a way, you know, of, like, the genre of K-pop. And so, like, I think many wouldn't expect to hear songs like this that cover topics like this. And I think it's really, you know, like how you said, beautiful in a sense to see them add their own takes onto it like this. Mm. And it's actually quite sad because even, like, songs like this, even though they're, like, like I said, beautiful in their own way, people will still say they're bad or discredit them just because of their bias. Yeah. 
which you know you know it's really sad especially because uh they in the end they're only really uh how would you say like how would you put it they're only really hurting themselves in the fact because they're not uh they're not getting to experience you know music like this Mm -hmm. because there's just like i mean um the song wait hold on which song was was it oh it was just a just be yourself you know that's another song that i was just like dang man like that that's a that's a song where certain lines would really um how would you say that i i feel like a ton of people could definitely connect to because just like the opening lines where it says uh even the feelings that had been locked up the days we spent talking about them um thank you dear my fr- or thank you my friend i was able to show my weak heart because of you you know um again i don't know how accurate those lyrics are excuse me if they not if they're not accurate but the video i was watching put it that way you know and like just kind of reading that kind of hits close because it's like that's something that a ton of people could relate to in the sense of like there's a ton of people out there who maybe you know don't necessarily have um in a sense the best support group but there's there's always someone that find there's always people that like just kind of find that uh that one person you know that they're able to open up to and uh but like at the same time as the song kind of talks about about you know it, the the song almost takes an approach of like uh like as if the person found the wrong person to open up to you know which is a another thing that a ton of people could end up relating to the fact that like you know they formed these relationships and they really got like a uh, personal in the sense of sharing certain information and then you know that person you know ends up uh how would you say it? Like, I don't know. Like, they, you know, for some people, we've seen cases of, like, people having that information uh, used against them. Or, like, you know, like, the relationship doesn't go as well, you know. And so it feels like a waste, in a sense, that, like, uh, I wasted my time telling this person this stuff about me, you know. And so, it, like, it's that whole thing of, like, like uh, basically what I'm trying to say is, like, a ton of people could relate to that topic about you know like uh finding someone to like trust in but also being weary of who you trust in and then you know as the song later gets into like the title it says uh you know also uh putting value in yourself you know it's very interesting because at the start of the podcast we were kind of like very i don't know i guess excited and happy to talk about this but like after looking at the lyrics and like self-reflecting you could kind of see how even though we don't necessarily understand the music we can still very much relate to the messages that they have and so that's just like another thing that like music regardless of the language or regardless of the origin it's basically universal yeah very much so that's why i've always been very open to like any music because like you know just the fact of like i don't want to miss out on something just because of a a language barrier you know especially when there's resources out there to like translate things you know for my sake which is why uh you know, it was the same kind of reasoning I took upon when it came to my main hobby of, uh, you know, when I watch wrestling. It's like I knew there was other, you know, uh, other types of wrestling out there. There was other promotions, you know. And so when I started watching the women's promotion in Japan, I was like, yeah, I may not understand what's going on here. But why should I let that take away from what i'm going to end up watching anyways because it's not like i mean it's kind of different in the sense of like oh when you're watching wrestling it's not like you necessarily need sound but like in the sense of like you know when they're trying to tell stories you know leading up to a match you know it's like there's the language barrier and i'm not gonna understand 
what the story is, what story is being told. But the similarity that I can give is that just how in that aspect they can uh, tell the story to me um, without the language or with the language barrier intact through the wrestling itself. There's still multiple aspects to music in which, you know, even if there's a language barrier, stuff such as, you know, the tone of the songs, you know, um, uh, the, the overall sound, like what like what type of uh music are we hearing here upbeat or or uh a slower tempo type song you know you can you can convey emotions and even like you know a general like story through that and uh another thing twice kind of does um well that i don't know if uh other groups do is they uh include english lyrics like from time to time like sometimes they'll even have like full lines and so like that on its own can give you a clue of maybe what the rest of the song is like you know and what's the like the growing popularity of k-pop in the west um more and more companies are incorporating um english lyrics i know twice actually signed with oh what's that it's like a big label they have like ariana grande and like other huge Western artists on there, and their like their production team has been working with them a lot more. So you could definitely tell that some of their songs, um, I guess you could tell that some of their songs have been translated from English to fit the like their Korean language. But regardless, like you said, there's still like a lot of resources nowadays that we're very like fortunate to have. Um, to be able to fully understand what's happening. And it's not like the companies themselves are providing these resources. It's like fans themselves who are generous enough to take the time out of their day to translate it for the other fans that don't speak Korean or Japanese. And, I don't know, it's just like a good way to bring people together, I guess. Yeah, and that's what I, like... I will say that's the one thing I've enjoyed the most is if you remember like what I when we talked about K-pop I talked about how like my initial knowledge was mainly about the toxicity and yet the entire this like entire time I have yet to encounter like any toxicity and um, I know it's probably because uh, I'm in my own little bubble and aren't in certain uh scenes to see that level of toxicity but from what i've seen it's like all i've seen is just true sort of uh like appreciation for the uh the artist the music and product as a whole and um just you know people wanting to grow and share what they what they're essentially what they love you know like we've seen countless times so many times uh throughout different medias throughout different topics you know it could be anything music shows animes movies um even certain just like hobbies such as like art we've seen it countless times people go out of their way to gatekeep and prevent things from growing and i can tell you for sure that is a big issue in the western media is people find a small artist and then gatekeep them and prevent them from growing because they don't want to overexpose them like i don't know why fans are afraid of artists blowing up and it's like you should be supportive to the level of helping them blow up so that more people get to know them and that artist truly becomes successful you know like i've seen many artists i myself have seen them go from that small fandom that small following to a higher level you know to a a broader level where a ton of people know about them and it's just like to me i don't get why anyone would gatekeep them from growing and you know hindering their success because it's always to me it's always such a beautiful thing to watch someone go from you know unknown to super well known you know like i obviously wasn't there for the start but so many people are proud of you know the journeys that so many people like you know like kanye the weekend you know even like personally like uh through my taste of music like 
seeing bands like Paramore and Linkin Park go from these small, you know, like I said, small unknowns to getting to that level of stardom, you know, like Kanye started off writing lyrics for other people in a company to now, I would personally say, passing anyone from that company he was originally under, you know. I uh, like he like that journey as a whole essentially is like very beautiful and you know seeing it, it's such a change of pace obviously again it could be completely different because I'm not you know in certain circles or certain areas but like to me it's like I've seen people be nothing of supported and do their most to expose and get their names out there for these different bands out in you know the east I think you have to go out of your way to find the toxicity. And in, other, in some cases, it um, kind of reaches you through word of mouth. And But if basically, if you just focus on the groups and their music and not necessarily the fandoms, you'll be all right. That's what I would say. Yeah, I think my best advice when it comes to really anything is to avoid most of the online fandoms because especially a lot of times like I, I don't know what it is but like the people you see online like this is this goes for everything in general really the people you see online aren't real in a sense and I don't mean like they're not like real people but like you rarely if ever run into those people in person you know like those people that are always arguing that are always being toxic and hateful you know you rarely run into those people like in real life and what what i think it truly is is that social media as a whole has just become an echo chamber where one person says something and everyone just runs with it you know like how i mentioned about you know in in part one of this uh, episode i mentioned about uh you know in especially like the hip hop world, like social media really becomes like a, a determining factor of how people perceive you. Cause that truly is an echo chamber. Cause the moment one person starts the narrative that you fell off or you aren't as great as you used to, and they get, you know, even if it's just like a couple of people to similarly run with that, I would uh, run with that narrative. If those people have enough of a following on those social media apps, they're going to run with it. They're going to spread it. And because it's an echo chamber, you're going to think that's the general consensus that, oh, this artist is terrible. And then, like, you go out of your way to listen to them on your own one day and you just realize, what what is social media even talking about, you know? I think um, that's very prominent in how, like, the outside world reviews k-pop everyone just kind of like gives it a bad rep but when you give it a chance you realize some of this music is like far greater or better than the stuff that western artists are producing but i guess like that could be like a biased opinion i guess but something that's like interesting to me and hopefully i could remember what i was thinking um that's really annoying Oh. oh yeah well sometimes they like fans they mean good but then it's just kind of like toxic but they don't see it that way or they're like blind to their own toxicity mm. because in K-pop like people defend there are some people who defend small groups endlessly like it's their like life to defend small groups but then when they talk about or when someone brings up like a big three plus one group which is basically like the bigger groups obviously they're like toxic but then since everyone shares the same opinion about them and everyone's pro small groups and how small groups make better music than big groups and so on and so forth they, they just kind of blind to their own toxicity. And I see that every day in my server. Whenever Twice is mentioned, whenever Blackpink is mentioned, whenever um, like Red Velvet or whatever are mentioned, everyone starts saying, oh, their success is because they're a big three plus one company. 
their success is because of the company name and not their talent. But then when a small group releases a song, which is bad, I should... Some of these songs are like the worst I've heard in years. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's the best. This is the best thing that's come out. Like, who needs big three plus one companies when this random group is releasing this legendary piece of music and I'm just sitting there like what are you on about <laughs> that makes no sense have you ever seen anyone switch up like if if a small group gets big and gets like support from like a big company have you ever seen them switch up on Dude, I, and start playing I see that with Dreamcatcher like I have a Dreamcatcher specific K-pop server and people switch up all the time when they're doing good and they're selling more, they're like, oh, yes, yeah, Streamcatcher is, is uh, growing in popularity. More people are coming in, more success for the girls. And then as soon as one little, like, like a person in the fandom is being toxic, they're like, oh, we should have stayed a small fandom of, <laughs> of hashtag smaller fandom days and stuff like that. And I'm just like, it's not just the new people that are toxic. All of you guys are toxic in your own way, but you're blind to it. And I see it every day, and it's it's so common in K-pop. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you saying that just reminded me of uh, my first like uh, experience since like giving K-pop a chance was uh, when uh, Nayeon released her uh, like little solo album. I actually got a taste of uh, fandoms interacting, and that's because um, Gio knows I was a real big fan of uh, the song she did with uh, Felix from Stray Kids. Um, I'm I'm blanking on the name right now. I feel mm. such a shame that I'm saying Felix. Uh, was it? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I, I like that song, and so typically what I'll do, it's not because I want to go and be uh, how would you say reaffirmed in my uh in my opinion but like i'm like oh let's see what other people are thinking of it and when i searched that song up i just saw both fandoms going at it to the point where like they were trying to call either one terrible and i saw like you know for some reason they were like calling each other like each each artist flops and i was just like what why are you people getting into this and even like it's sad to see that happened. Like, I didn't see that. I didn't see, like, the Nyon Felix hate for each other. Or, like, the fandoms hating on each other. So, if you know Felix, he's the biggest Twice fan ever. Like, every time a Twice song comes up, he's the first one to jump in front and start dancing the choreography. And for him to have the opportunity to collab with one of the Twice members, you'd think the fandom would be, like, happy for him. But for them to just suddenly start attacking each other, it's it's so dumb. It was one and of the funniest things I saw, like, genuinely. And I think the main thing that sparked it is someone, like, re like put out, uh, they were like, oh, here's the song without Felix on it. And that's when people got into the arguments of, like, they were like, oh, he was so good on the song. And then, again, like how you said, the people who are just so blissfully ignorant to the fact of their own toxicity... They weren't realizing how toxic they were being when they started saying, oh, he made that song. It's the only reason that song's so good. And it's like, you people are just, you know, adding to the flame more and more as you go on. And uh, I don't know, that was just so funny t for me to see. And like adding on to the original point where you were talking about like your the people in your server hyping up like, uh, or not your service, really, but that one server you're in, like, you know, them hyping up certain like smaller artists you know i truly believe like i i always think you know in order for a person to think of themselves as a fan of an artist a band whatever it's um whatever whatever you know like qualifications they put on to themselves not what other people go on to because again similarly to the whole toxicity thing and you know limiting growth it's very limiting when you tell someone, "Oh, you can't be a song, a fan of this person or their, of or this band if you don't know this many songs or you haven't listened to this and this." Personally, I put those kind of restrictions on myself, where it's like I don't call myself a fan of an artist unless I'm like 
really into them and have listened to like multiple songs or albums from them because for me i don't want to be put in the situation where i'm like oh yeah i'm a fan of them and then the person finds out or like i end up they try they end up trying to have a conversation with me about the artist and i'm like oh, i've only listened to like two songs from them but the one rule i think that should be universal throughout all fandom is that if you are truly a fan of an artist of a band whatever you should be able to admit that even they have at least one bad song. And you should be able to recognize oh. when they've made a bad song. Dude, that's the biggest issue with my server. Like, if I had to pinpoint something, when whenever, like, because honestly, I have a very unbiased opinion about Dreamcatcher. Whenever, like, whenever the question comes up, well, what's like one song that you like least, or a song that isn't like as good as the rest? Everyone goes, "Oh, Dreamcatcher doesn't have any bad releases. Oh, everything is perfect. They're the best." Blah blah blah. And I'm just sitting there like, why? Like I can't like kick them out because they're my regulars. Without them, my server would be dead. But like, come on. Like even like the most like there's this guy in my like I like I'm not trying to like, you know, hate on my people, but come on, man. You have to realize that, because I think their ballads are not that great. Like compared to other groups and their ballads, like Dreamcatcher is like very far behind. But their title tracks are good, and some of the other songs are good. But I'm like reasonable enough to like be able to say that and mean it. I'm not hating on them. It's just my opinion. I think that when it comes to their ballads, it's not as good. But that's what everyone should be able to do. They shouldn't be blind. To just, I have to think everything about this group is great, or else I'm not a fan. And I, I, I agree very strongly with you. Have to like realize that that's just not possible. Yeah, I'm. I am one who there is not a single artist in my playlist. Specifically, if you limit it down to the ones that, again, through my classifications, I truly consider myself a fan of. There is not a single one that I can tell you that, uh, you know, isn't that they're perfect, that they don't have a bad song. Because I can name you for any of them, whether it be Linkin Park, Three Days Grace, Paramore, um, The Weeknd, you know, um, Juice World, Kid Cudi, um, Green Day, AFI, any of these bands, any of these artists, I can name you at least one bad song that they've had that i consider bad and even if it might not be consensus i will always hold it true and you know it's like you have to be willing to admit they have one bad song at the very least because if if you can't like I, again people's personal opinions may be different but the reason i always hold that one rule above anyone is because again it ties into the whole thing of sometimes people are just so blindfully ignorant to the fact that like they're letting their fandom, in a sense, get to them where they're they're getting to the point where it's like idolization and they're like, oh, I can't see them doing any wrong. It's like, no, you you have to be able to recognize it for the artist's sake because they need to know when they've, you know, had a bad release so that they can improve. If everyone's just telling them this is good, you know, but it's in reality a bad song, you know, it's like they're just going to continue with that you know and uh, yeah i i think I that's like a big thing i think yeah people just need to like wise up and stop being so unbelievably biased yeah and i don't know i also feel like you could tell me different because uh again I, I i keep saying this over and over but i'm not like well informed i'm i'm the newbie here um i feel like that, in a sense, kind of seems like a, how would you say, like, I don't want to make it sound like this in, like, in a bad way, but, like, it's almost like a staple of the genre in the sense of, like, other than, like, or because it adds to the toxicity, like, that's one of the main things that's, like, that's one of the big labels that is kind of stuck onto the genre as a whole, that, like, that's one of the main things they see other than, like, Oh, the fan. Well, it's part of it. The fan base is being toxic. Is like this fact of like uh, 
you know, they let their biases get in the way from like a properly, how would you say, like properly conversing with people, you know, and properly, uh, you know, as a whole, you know, the whole thing of like artist growth and recognizing, you know, terrible songs, all that, like they just don't know how to properly handle all that. And it's such a negative that like it kind of sticks like it, it it wrongfully sticks to the genre and that's ends up causing so many people to have that view of it and it's basically okay this is kind of like a hot take but it's virtually impossible to have a conversation about anything when it comes to k-pop because of that bias like, let's say if it's just a simple question. Like, I always ask in my service because I'm really into, like, the music videos and, like, the VFX, CGI, and all of that stuff. I just ask a simple question. Who do you guys think... Oh, what music video do you like best? Or who did the best music video this year? And there's obviously a clear, ans- a clear answer to it if people were unbiased because... Like, maybe during a comeback, one group just went above and beyond and did such an amazing job that they deserve the recognition of of that, I guess, label of having, like, the best music video. Even if you ask something like that, which is kind of, like, controversial in a sense, but it's only controversial because it's K-pop. And other, like, discussions you could probably have, uh, like, a, a good conversation about it and leave with something like some new knowledge or whatever but whenever i ask a question like that in my server it's always i say oh i think for for example aspa with their new music video girls i think that's the best music video of 2022 because it's incredible and then out of nowhere everyone starts flying at me with oh what about this group what about that group what about this group what about that group what about this group that released a boring video but because they're small you have to be nice about it (laughs) and then it's literally impossible to have a conversation even if we do have a conversation it just results in the same thing oh i think i think jyp and twice with this music video did really well oh it's because they have the money for it it's because they're a top company if uh, if this small group had the same amount of money they would be producing the same stuff and it's it's always like fight for the fight for the small one and hate on the big one and it's just kind of like there's no point in even bothering having that conversation because it always results in the same and even today like we were just talking about because in k-pop there's like different generations like um twice is generation three and every year there's a new generation and we were just having a simple discussion which generation do you think is best and at first it was a, a good conversation because I think, oh, Gen 2 had better vocals, Gen 3 had better dancers, blah, blah, blah. And then towards the end of it, there was a guy in my server who was fighting an uphill battle, but he just wouldn't stop because we were saying that his favorite group had flaws. And he kept saying, oh, what about this performance? What about that? Oh, yeah, but they don't really sing live. They sing live. Their dancing is harder than everybody else. And everyone's just like, yeah, we get it. But we just, like, the majority of us think that this is what we think. And then he just kept going and going until the whole point, to the point where he got so defensive about it that he started insulting the other, like, my other um, server members. And I'm just like, dude, stop it before I ban you. And it's just ridiculous. It's honestly, it's ridiculous. And so there's only, like, 10 minutes left and you really you brought up the twice music video and that's something i don't think we discussed in these two episodes so i'll get into but uh i just real quickly want to add i think another issue too is that uh people are just unable to recognize that other people are obviously going to always have different opinions and then they struggle to take on that approach of like uh how to handle it properly because like how you said you know, you, you want to have a discussion, but then, the, like, the moment someone starts going, oh, what about this one? What about this one? People don't realize that when they do that, they're not doing the the thing they're talking about any favors. Because if anything, that just puts people off even more and doesn't want to make them check it out, you know? 
A hundred percent. I agree completely with you on that point. Because the guy I was just talking about, he posts endlessly about Itzy and how great they are and how intense their dancing is. And, like, honestly, whenever I see, like, Itzy on Instagram, I'm just sick of it. I don't, like, I hate the group now because of how much he talks about it. And it, it really does put people off and you're, just, and you're like, too intense it. about it. But we should really, because I think we haven't even talked about the last song on the album. We just kind of, like, started... We have oh, not. Nice. So to close out this episode, let's talk about the final song and the music video. Mm-hmm. The, the last song that we still need to talk about is Bittersweet. And it basically talks about like a summer crush and just a crush that m- means more than it really should, in my opinion, because there's a lyric that says um, not even to the point of holding hands surely even if it was both our awkward selves and it kind of like throughout the song you kind of see how like intense this person is feeling towards the other person and how special it is to them but they didn't really do anything it was just kind of like um what's the word um It's not like a crush, but it's like the thing before a crush, or like it's more like the idea of them. Than, what's that word? Um, infatuation. There yeah, we go. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing I did like about that song is that the ending, the, the song ends with it says uh, bittersweet summer love like three times, but then the last word is bittersweet. And then I think that just kind of like elevates the whole message of the song even more because the summer end ended with this person with a bittersweet feeling and so does the song. Yeah, and I think uh, the lyric too that adds to that whole part of like, you know, um, what would you like describe, how you describe, you know, like that that bittersweetness and all that is, uh, well, it's two lines. There's a line that's, oh, they, they follow each other back to back where it says, uh, I wonder if my uh, was I wonder if my feelings uh, had been found out by you, and then right after they say, um, even at the what was it even even at the end, I couldn't convey the extent of my feelings, and so it's like it is bittersweet in the sense of like they felt this way and they never properly got to express it, you know, in a way mm-hmm. that you know in, in a sense would give them closure so that it doesn't feel bittersweet. Mm-hmm. That, that, I think that was a really good uh, factor. It's kind of song. like um, a sad song in disguise. Yeah, and that's a that's another thing I like is that like because of it, 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 this is why uh, I like the genre is that it pushes me to learn more about it because I can just hear a song and I'm like, oh, it sounds all nice and this and this, and then I go and look at the lyrics and I'm just like, wow, that is not at all what you sound like. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of like deceptively written songs. Well, not written, just like the way that the song is presented is very different from the actual meaning. Uh, an example that comes to mind is um, Killing Me by Icon. And when you listen to the song, it, it has like a very upbeat song. And you do hear the, the lyrics saying Killing Me, but you don't really understand like the full context of context of it until you read the lyrics and then you kind of see that it's a breakup song and the person is describing to basically themselves that a part of the other person is still in them and like internally killing them and it's kind of like it's a lot deeper than you think and k-pop is not notorious for it because it's like recent trends are more like on the Let's make a song catchy than profound. Yeah. But some of like the earlier stuff is definitely and they do that well. Yeah, another song I can give out is um What Can I Do by Day Six. I that that song is is always gonna be like uh you know, like one of those like key memories to me because when I first heard it, you know, it was like I was saying, Oh man, this sounds so nice. This is like I literally had it in 
a playlist of mine that's like it, it was basically just like a bunch of songs that have like a good vibe to them and then i made the mistake of one day reading the lyrics and i was just like man i cannot look at this song the same way anymore because those lyrics completely just uh <coughs> Almost in a sense broke my heart because I listened to it and I was just like, man, you are not what I thought you to be. And that that doesn't mean in a bad way. It's just like, man, the lyrics hit so different. I was like, I can't view you in the same light anymore of, yeah, this is a fun, happy-go-lucky type song. Mm. And there's like other um, song. Another song that came to mind is Piano Man by Mamamoo. And you hear it and it has like a nice jazzy tone. And you just think... You you think something, but then when you look at the real, the lyrics and that true meaning of the song, you can never look at that song the same because the actual message of the song is about a woman who is complimenting a man for being good with his fingers. During <laughs> oh wow, during certain act during a certain activity, when dude, when I found that out, I was like. I could never, I, like, I can't listen to that song anymore because all I think about is the these lyrics. four idols who I thought were thinking about something that I guess innocent, and then they're all, all of a sudden talking about this. I'm just like, man, that, that's it. another topic I'll have to ask about you in the world of K-pop is what is their view and approach on certain like taboo topics when they when they do songs, but. uh with about three minutes and thirty seconds remaining, I guess real quickly, what are your thoughts on the music video? Because I personally enjoyed a lot of it. Because as I mentioned in the first episode, it was bright. It was you know it matched the vibe of the song, and honestly, a lot of the effects, the the angles, the transitions from scene to scene were just really good and stuff like that. I mean, there was a bit of points where you can say maybe it didn't look as good or awkward, but like as a whole, I really enjoyed that music video. Mm -hmm. For I think I'd rate the music video a good eight out of ten. It's very like simple in its own way, but the way that it was presented and like you said, the transitions, the graphics that they used, and like the the overall presentation was very well made. Um, but I know you can't really expect much from it because when it comes to like releases like this, the point of it is not to be like over the top. And full of, like, transition here, effect there, fire, 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 fireball, and stuff like that, like in other music videos. But for what it is, it's a very good music video. It's like, I think it's done by the same, uh, com the same, like, studio and director that usually does twice music videos. And it's just, a, like, another hit in my book for them. Yeah, really great stuff. Uh, what would you rate this album? Uh, 10 out of 10. I like just because it wasn't what I was expecting, it was higher on my list. Just the lyrics and everything just kind of made it so much better for me. I still want to give it a couple more listens to, but for now, because everyone knows my ratings will always change, uh, I'm going to give it an 8 just for now, but that will likely go up just because, uh, you know. The more I listen to this, the more I'll like resonate more with certain tracks, and they'll build up that uh, connection to get a higher rank or rating, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, that's fair. With that being said, we'll close out here. Um, I don't know when the next release is, what the next topic will be, but hopefully by then we will come to y'all with a, a name certified certified like intro and maybe proper outro whatever it may be but thank you all for joining us for these two episodes hope you enjoy and hope to see you for more in the future